In this video, we're going to be looking at perfect active participles. These ones are kind of weird and I will explain why. Welcome back to Bam Bas Bat. In this video, we're going to be talking about participles and what that means is we're going to need our noun endings to be really secure because participles are basically adjectives. They use our noun endings, so if you've forgotten them, go and grab my free noun endings guide from the link in the description below. It'll really help you just to have it to hand and they're really useful to learn anyway. So get on that if you haven't already. So first we need to think about what is a participle. It's what's called a verbal adjective. Now we break that down into two parts. It's formed from a verb, so it's verbal, but it's an adjective because it declines just like an adjective. It has a tense because it is formed from a verb, but it declines like an adjective, so it has number, gender, and case, and it has to match the noun that it's describing in all those three things, just like an adjective. There are four types of participle that we really need to know. The first one is present active, carrying. Perfect passive participles, having been carried. Future active participles, being about to carry. And perfect active participles, having spoken. Now these are what we're looking at today, but these are for deponent verbs only. Perfect active participles are actually quite weird. I really like them because, as you all know, I like weird grammar points in Latin. That's why I do this. But anyway, perfect active participles are formed from the third principal part of a deponent verb. Now that is very different to perfect passive participles. Perfect passive participles and future active participles are formed from the fourth principal part of Latin verbs. However, deponent verbs do not have four principal parts. They only have three. So the perfect active participle is formed from that third principal part. It is passive in form, but active in meaning. If you've missed my video about deponent verbs as a whole, you can find that on my channel. It's a really helpful one to watch maybe before this one. So if you do get confused at any point during this video, go back and rewatch that. They're the sneaky verbs, deponent verbs. Again, I really like them because that's who I am as a person. Perfect active participles, like all participles, match the noun they're describing in case, number, and gender. They decline like a 212 adjective. What that means is they use the second declension, first declension, and second declension neuter endings, so they use us, a, um. I'll get a bit more into those endings in one second. They describe an action that has already happened when the main verb occurs. So they're a bit like perfect passive participles in this case. The action has already happened when the main action takes place, but don't forget they are active in meaning, even though they look passive. Now, really, really important, they are only for deponent verbs. Remember I said that they are formed from the third principal part of a deponent verb? Well, here is what I mean by that. Deponent verbs like hortor, to encourage, have these principal parts. We have hortor, I encourage, hortari, to encourage, and hortatus sum. Now that is my perfect stem of this verb. Because it's deponent, it doesn't have the fourth principal part because it is included within this perfect stem. I don't need another one. It already tells me. They are passive in form, but they are active in meaning. So I encouraged. So this bit in bold from the third principal part, just the hortatus, that's the bit that my perfect active participle is formed from. I take off the verb to be, the sum that's on the end of my third principal part, and then I add my endings to that. So I have us, hortatus, I have hortata, if I'm describing a feminine noun, and I have hortatum, if I'm describing a neuter noun. They're my singular nominatives. I can have them in any case. Remember, they have to match my noun with whatever case they are describing. These are my plural endings. Again, don't worry about learning them right now off this one little bit of video. You can download my free noun endings guide from the link in the description below and have it to hand while we go through these and if we're in the future. Let's have a look at an example. Nuntius locutus discessit. This can look a little bit confusing because if you're not sure about your deponent verbs, you might not guess that locutus is deponent, it is not passive. However, you all know that locutus is one of my favourite deponent verbs, so obviously I was going to use it for this example. So nuntius is my nominative and locutus is the participle that is describing that messenger. The messenger, having spoken, left. So it's active in meaning, having spoken, he's the one who spoke, he wasn't spoken to, or he wasn't spoken about, but he has spoken. So the messenger, having spoken, left. It has happened, the speaking has happened before my main verb, which is discuss it, he left. Now I could also translate this if I wanted to be a bit more fluent as when the messenger had spoken, he left. That would be fine too. Or after the messenger spoke, he left. 
all of these are absolute great translations. You'll get full marks for it and you're getting the sense with all of them. Just depends on which your preference is. I really like the messenger having spoken left because I keep that sort of participle vibe going. But any of those are absolutely perfect. Let's look at another one. Feminae soum secutae tabernam introerunt. Now this one is a little bit longer, a little bit more confusing. However, let's just break it down. Feminae matches my introverent, so I know it's the women entered. What did the women enter? The tabernam. That's my main sentence. The women entered the shop or the inn. My soum secutae just gives me a little bit more information. I can see from secutae that it matches, in case number gender, my feminae, my women. Now, secutai comes from sequor, which means I follow. So in this case, it means the women, having followed the slave, entered the shop. Again, I could translate this in various different ways. I could say, having followed the slave, the women entered the shop, or the women entered the shop after following the slave. Any of those are fine. And that's all there is to perfect active participles, really. They're actually a lot simpler than they sound when you first hear about them. You just take that third principal part from your deponent verb's dictionary entry, you take off the verb to be, and then you add the correct endings based on the noun you are describing. Don't forget that if you want to have a look at any of these endings, you can grab my noun endings guide from the link in the description below and have it to hand as you go through your Latin learning. Thanks so much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments, and I'll see you next time on Bambas Bat.